So now what we're going to do is look at examples of cinematic techniques. Now, cinematic techniques is what constructs the film. It's what provides meaning. So when you watch a film, you're not just thinking about the plot. You're thinking about how the filmmaker really uses different techniques in order to create an image to you, create a new world and construct this world in front of your eyes. So firstly, we're going to be looking at the technique of camera shots. Now, there are a lot of different sorts of camera shots and we'll be looking at these individually. So the first of these is called the extreme long shot. Now, the extreme long shot contains a large amount of landscape. It's really when you're getting the full picture, you know, such as seeing the entire Eiffel Tower at once. It's often used at the beginning of a scene or of a film overall to establish a really large general location. So this is basically the setting shot. It's where you're getting your first insight into where the movie's set and therefore what it might be about. This is also known as an establishing shot because it really establishes these factors for you. Another sort of technique is the long shot. Now, when we look at these camera techniques, we're getting progressively smaller. So we're going from the very wide scale down to the very detailed. So moving a bit smaller, we get the long shot. Now, this contains landscape, but it also gives the viewer a more specific idea of setting. So you're a bit closer, you're not quite so far away. A long shot may show the viewers the building where the action will take place. So, you know, you might be seeing the sign on the building, you might be seeing a full shot of the building itself, but maybe not a whole lot of sky in the background. You're just lessening the scope a little bit. Thirdly, we move to the full shot. Now, the full shot contains a complete view of the characters. Viewers can take in the costumes of the characters through this. So this is quite a good orienting shot. It's whether the first time you get to see the characters in more detail rather than just seeing them from a really long distance away. It may also help to demonstrate the relationship between the characters. So at this point, you might be seeing body language. You might be seeing issues of appearance, of clothing, makeup, things like that. You're really getting yourself oriented to the characters who are going to make up that movie. We then move to the mid shot. Now the mid shot contains the characters from the waist up. So you're only really seeing half of their body at this point, but obviously that's going to provide you with more detail. You're going to be focusing on their face, on their upper body language. So viewers can see the characters' faces more clearly, as well as their interaction with other characters. So this is really important in establishing relationships and also really important for conducting dialogue. It's also known as a social shot. Obviously, the idea of social is that people are interacting together. So the social shot fits very well with the mid shot because it's where you're getting the people together and really seeing the way they're interacting, talking and participating. We then move on to the close up. Now, the close up contains just one character's face. It's where you're really getting a very close up shot, literally of one person and most obviously their face. This enables viewers to understand the actor's emotions. So you're getting a good understanding of their face, you're getting a good understanding of their eyes, what their sort of expression on their face is at that time, and then you're interpreting what you will from that. This also allows them to feel empathy for the character which they're looking at because they feel like they have a more emotional understanding of that character. It's also known as a personal shot for that factor. You're really feeling a personal connection to the character. We finally get to the extreme close-up. Now this contains one part of a character's face or a small part of an object. So we're really getting very close detailed in on the image. This type of shot creates an intense mood. And this also provides interaction and connection between the audience and the viewer. So we're really getting a sense that there's a very strong relationship. You might see very specific things, you know, a single tear rolling down the person's face or, you know, the reflection of something in their eye. This is really where you're getting a lot of detail coming out. 